Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Teor and this is Madara on Tabletop Simulator. Alright, so the last video we went on a bit long, I apologize, because it was mostly just me trying to figure out exactly what build I was going with. Um, but yeah, I think this will be my in-game build here, assuming nothing goes wrong. Um, it's a little bit different from what I used on my personal playthrough. Uh, my personal playthrough, I had one support, and then essentially I had the dual wielding um, melee, an archer, and then I had somebody with two uh, a two-handed weapon uh, that could do um, uh, sinful privilege, essentially, and attack from range. So essentially the, the goal is to have just only one person in the thick of it, and then everyone else kind of do DPS from the back. But uh, this will be a little bit different, um, but we'll see how it goes. It's, it shouldn't be the end of the world. Um, anyway, uh, Rook is the only person that has enough experience to actually get anything. I'm going to go ahead and continue saving up. Uh, one more experience point would get him access to Wings Manifest, and I think that would be a kind of a good ability to go ahead and start throwing around. Uh, besides that, I don't have any money left, so we're going to go ahead and just dive into this. So um, that means I'm, of course, going to be ignoring the Angel Plate, so that will be added to the pile there. And uh, we go straight into main quest, the flight to Greyhaven, which is page 361, which will be on chapter 5. So there you go. There's the someone on the pirate, on the, uh, the, the airship. Flight to Greyhaven. There was an airship mur moored at, on the dock, sleek and sharp with a single mast carrying a large white and black flag decorated with a flaming skull. Near the back of the ship, a large blue stone was chained to the deck. Is that their cargo? Nightingale asked Shayless. That's Itlum, dork. Shayless laughed, slapping her uh, sister on the back playfully. It's what makes the makes the ships float. I know what a float core is, Nightingale grumbled. I've never seen anyone put it on the deck of their ship, though. Isn't that a little weird? Every ship is different. Shayless uh, shrugged as she went up the stairs. The airships at the Royal Family Commission all happened to have their float cores built below deck. It looks way cooler up up top, Nightingale mused, eyes wide at, at, a, at the spectacular sight. Yeah, well, when the Itlum is revealed like that, the only it, it only takes one hit from a cannon or, sp or spell to send the whole ship down. That's why we built ours below deck. The docks were really catwalks hanging over the canyon itself. There were no railings, only a hundred foot drop to rough stone far below. Nightingale shivered, staying as close to the middle of the dock as she could. As she climbed the rickety steps, Nightingale found herself wishing for the well-built and maintained docks of Hyde. As she neared the ship, Nightingale saw that her initial impressions hadn't been quite right. Slick red metal made up the majority of the ship, which was adorned with chrome rudders, rails, and pointed accessories. But the moment Nightingale was standing close, she realized how small the ship was. Despite the impressive sail and spear gun beneath the bow, its name, the Oppressor, seemed a bit of an overstatement. Shayla stood at the edge of the dock, conversing with a wiry man with a clipboard and a pair of spectacles. As Nightingale approached, she saw Shayla's hand over a small pouch of coins. The man, the man took them, feeling the weight. I think this will do fine, he said, before his eyes settled on Nightingale. Is this one of your passengers? Shayla nodded. This is Nightingale, my sister. The man only grunted, looking her over. Aye, and what are you, eight stone? He didn't wait for a reply, turning to shout in the direction of the helm. Eight stone, Effie. Eight, came a reply, uh, a, a reply shout, and the sound of machinery got slightly louder. The ship began to rise, sta uh, straining on the ropes, and the man gestured behind him. Get on, then. Don't just watch us drift away. Nightingale stepped aboard, and the deck g gave slightly under her weight as though it were floating in an invisible ocean. You you regulate your cork, float core manually? Shayless asked, sound of surprise. How hard is that to keep up? The crewman laughed. Never mind that. The oppressor will get you where you need to go. Won't find a better ship in port. Nightingale choked back to laugh, looking around them as she made her way to the bow. There, were, there weren't any other ships in, in port. An hour later, they were underway. Uh, Nightingale had worried that she might get sick from the motion of the ship as it constantly rocked back and forth while they were loading cargo and passengers. But once they got moving, it was stable without any of the bobbing or swaying of an ocean ship. Nightingale found a place to, to lean off the edge of the bow, the, the bow railing. Air blasted past her. She could almost imagine what it might be like to have wings like Remy and be able to fly on her own. The canyon below was deeper than she might have expected. 
Much of it was obscured by mist, though she occasionally caught a glimpse of exotic blue-green plants, their bioluminescence pa light, uh, lighting patches of fog. Once she felt a little steadier, Nightingale went looking for her friend. She found Remy, Rook, and Chalice lounging on cushions and little stools under a bright woven canopy near this helm. Come on! Chalice patted a chair beside her, holding up a shiny metal flask. Nightingale hurried over, grinning. Where's Zeke? she asked. Sulking. Rook answered, tilting his head toward the storm. He's still little, uh, still shaken up over losing justice. I can't blame him. Nightingale had needed a moment by herself, too, so she understood. She took the seat. What's in the flask? Uh, Shayla's offered it to her. Why don't you find out? Just a sip, though. It's strong stuff. Remy choked back a laugh, looking pointedly away. Nightingale took the flask and sipped it cautiously. The liquid inside was pop piping hot, a medley of sweet tangs and musky spices. What is this? Nightingale made, a, uh, made to take another drink, but wasn't fast enough. Shayla snatched it back, secured the cap again, and slipped it away. Pretty good, right? One of the perks of coming out this far. Rare spices are much easier to come by. All right, do we have experience guide? No. So we go to the next flat check. Uh, do we have last of our coterie? No. So we go straight to Mimnock, the Flying Fortress, 364. Hey! Someone uh, had bumped into Zeke, making him drop the cigarette he'd been smoking. It tumbled over the side of the ship, a faint orange ember quickly fading from sight. He turned to glare at whoever had interrupted him. He expected the others to understand his desire to be alone. It wasn't anyone he'd seen before. Judging by the tool belt and the grease-stained hands, he guessed she was an engineer. Her, ha uh, her hair was a bright blonde, and her eyes studied Zeke intently. It's rude to sneak up on people like that. He reached into a pocket and fished out a fresh cigarette in his lighter. What if I dropped something important? She ignored his grumblings, pulling up beside him on the bit uh, on the bench. She perched on it lengthwise, both arms in front of herself, staring at him. Are you really Zeke Strong? She didn't wait for an answer. What are you doing booking passage on my ferry, anyway? Someone as rich as you probably has their own. Did it crash? Or were you attacked by pir pirates? Brought down in a storm during a secret mission? Ran, into a, ran it into a floating island while... I don't have an airship, Zeke interrupted. I mean, we have a family airship, I guess, but it's not like I can use it any time I want. He stopped himself for a moment and gave her a skeptical look. Wait, is this you, this is your airship? The girl, the girl laughed. Yep. She hopped into a standing position on the bench, leaning sideways on the railing. Captain Effie Grand, at your service. And my baby here is the oppressor. She patted the rail, railing proudly. I'm also the chief engineer. Oppressor, huh? He flicked his lighter, igniting the, his cigarette, and took a long drag. You sure you wouldn't rather call it the tiniest ship in the port? She's more than she seems, she, Effie pressed, protested. Besides, everybody starts somewhere. I'm saving up, okay? Each trip goes toward, some, toward awesome upgrades. Just you wait one day. I'll get the oppressor to be as grand as Mimnock. Zeke raised an eyebrow. He remembered the name from one of his history classes at the Institute. He'd slipped through most of those lectures, though, so he couldn't be sure. Isn't that a Brahminian ship? A flying fortress, more like. Zeke scoffed. You'll have to get a new crew, too. This bunch here isn't enough to fly an entire fortress. I know! She whipped something out of her, one of her pockets and held it toward him. Zeke took the offer card, then turned it over in his hand. It was a Rambrachus car with the image of a massive warship. Many times larger and better armed than the oppressor. Want to try and blow it up? Looks pretty tough. You definitely want my help. Oh, sorry. Wrong voice, but that's all right. Effie's, uh, Effie's eyes widen. Is a prince asking me if I want to play a game of Abraxas? She fished around it on her belt and snatched off a little pouch of dice and tossed it up and down in one hand. On one condition, Zeke lowered his voice to an urgent whisper. If the big guy asks, you tell him you asked me. Rook would never let me live it down if, if he found out I actually liked the game. So there you go. Zeke actually enjoys Abraxas. I certainly don't. So this is the one time where Abraxas is actually forced upon you, because it's actually part of the narrative, or the main narrative. So you've been challenged by the famous Brahmian airship Mimnok. Depending on how many players survive the Abraxas battle dice, uh, or Abraxas dice battle, gain the following rewards. And this is a chance to get some pretty good stuff. Um, I think the, I've only done this one once, and I think I got 50 gold out of it. I mean, at this point, anything is useful. So... As always, you know the drill for Abraxas. We'll grab our dice. 
This will be the last time uh, we'll be doing a Braxis for this playthrough. Here's hoping I never have to. Well, that's a lie. I'm gonna have to because I've been playing my own. Per I've been. I started another playthrough where I'm using the promo cards. All right, and we of course want to grab Mimnock, the Flying Fortress. More on that in a bit. I would like to get an item, but the best I've ever done on any Abraxas is three, uh, three survivors, and that was on an easier card. All right, so let's go ahead and read up on Mimnock. Each roll, roll the black and add its symbols to Mimnock. If the skulls roll, everyone loses one Abraxas point and no symbols are added. So for this one, uh, if you note, all the other ones is all about drawing a rare weapon. This one is purely just rolling a black die, and there are definitely... I fairly certain there's combinations you cannot actually get 100% on. So all we need is a black die, which is kind of nice, I guess. All right, with that, let's go ahead and roll the black die and see what we get. All right, it's uh, three books and one shield, so that means we need a burst, five books, and three shields. Okay. I'll go ahead and take that one. I'll take this one. Mm. Take that one. And uh, we'll take this one. Okay, keep rolling. Okay, all blanks. So yeah, with that roll there, like literally, I'm not gaining any ground there. Yeah, unfortunately this one's not going to be able to get equal. Alright, we'll see what we get. Alright. If I do this, I'll take two damage. So we'll just let that roll and see if I get slightly better. If I get a blank, I'll take three damage in total. If I take it now, I would take one, two, three. I would take three damage anyway. Okay. Because, yeah, the extra burst. Um... If I, I'm right now too short on this one. I'm going to go ahead and just take the two damage for this one. Mm, actually, no. I'll, I'll, I'll see what the roll is. There's a chance I'll still take two damage, though. All right. Uh, and if I let this one go right now... All right, I will go ahead and take this one. Uh, I'll end up taking two damage on this one, which is fine. I'm trying to think here. If I got the burst, I would take two damage. And no, actually, we'll see what I get. I think we might be able to get, well, Yeah, that's fine. We can do the roll. It'll probably be still end up being take, taking two damage there. Uh, for this one, unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have to take the shield and see what happens. All right. Let's go ahead and roll and see what we get for the last one. Okay. Uh, so we get another book. 
So this is one, two, three, four. So I'm missing a book and I have an extra burst. So two damage. Uh, this one here, I am missing one book. So I only take one damage. And then this one here, I am missing, I have an extra shield, missing two books, and I am missing a burst. And then here, unfortunately, I am missing one book and one burst. All right. Uh, let's use a counter to keep track of how many rounds this is. So we've done one. We have to do five in total. Okay, four bucks. So it's going to be burst, six books, and two shields. I'm pretty sure you can't get that result without losing health, so that's not great. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and take the seven. Yeah, it's impossible because you'll end up getting extra shields. So yeah, this one's just kind of brutal. Not much we can do about it. Take the eight. Take the blue. Oh, and I need to take something here. Uh, all these are bad. We'll just take the eight and cry. All right. Take the three. Take the nine. Take the four. And take the, uh, we'll take the five. Take the three. Take the seven. Take the nine. I'm going to take the four as well. I'll take the 10. All right. Uh, I could potentially save myself some damage. So yeah, we'll, we'll roll this last one and see what we get. Okay. So uh, missing a book and have an extra shield. So two damage. Uh, missing two books, missing three books, and an extra shield. And then this one here is missing three books. Yeah, majority of the dice rolls on the black die are particularly brutal. I mean, most of, we're pretty much at half-life and we still have three more of these to do. Okay, skull. So when a skull happens, everyone loses one Abraxas point and no symbols are added. The extra damage was, it's kind of a cruel twist with a knife, to be honest. It, it should have just been no symbols added. I mean, granted, the rewards for this are pretty significant, so it is what it is. We'll take the seven, take the nine. Uh, take the blue and take the four. Okay, take the ten. Take the two. Uh, take the six, no, take the three. Uh, at this point I'm taking extra symbols. Uh, we'll take the seven. Okay, I'm gonna spend an extra Abraxas point to take both of these. And I'm also going to do the same for here. Uh, 
and I'm going to do that. And that, and then we'll roll and see what we get for the last one. Okay. Um, two extra shields. Yeah, so this is one that is eliminated. Uh, this one's exactly correct, so plus one health. This one here has two extra books and missing a burst, so three damage. And then this one here has one extra shield, so it takes one damage. Yeah, so chances are a little slim. So we've done three so far. Roll. Alright, three shields and a book. So it's going to be, we need three books and five shields and a burst. Okay. All right. Shields are favored, so we'll take that. Take that. Take that. All right, and then roll. I literally have to get perfect here, so uh, good luck me. Take the two. Okay. All right, roll everything. Okay. Uh, take the seven. At this point, I have exactly, but so I need to hope I get a zero. If I don't get a zero, it's going to be painful. I think I'm going to try to get the zero because I'm not going to survive otherwise. Um, if I keep the. Yeah, I'll go ahead and spend the extra and put that there. And then. Uh, uh, this is impossible. I literally cannot. I can't survive this one. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate him. Or eliminate... Uh, yeah, that's Zeke there, so... He is off. I'm not going to bother continuing rolling that. Alright, so that just leaves this roll. So let's see what we get. There's a 1 in 3 chance we can get perfect. Not quite perfect, but close. So one extra book takes one damage. Uh, five shields, that's all normal. One burst. And then that, this one here, I have an extra burst, so I take one damage. All right. Last round, uh, we have two people left. OK, same result. Let's go ahead and roll and see what we get. All right, so we need extra shields, so we'll take that. Uh, we'll take a shield here. Will that be enough? No. Actually, we'll take the a blank purple and see what happens. Roll again. Take the six. We'll take the uh, we'll take the eight. All right. Uh, chances are slim that I'm not going to be able to make this. I'm going to go ahead and spend the uh, fate point here. Okay, and then last roll. Yep, all right, so eliminated. And then here we needed five shields. We're missing one, three books, which we have, and missing a burst. So we take two damage. We have one survivor. With one survivor, we get 50 gold. So puts us at 85. Enough to buy an upgrade if we need it. 
though there's no shop at the moment. All right, let's keep uh, continue on making friends. Three sixty five. Effie gigg giggled as she packed up the game. Without without enough room for a table on the deck, the group had played on the floor. Effie went off for the Mimnock card last. Zeke snatched it off the deck, holding it out of her reach. Hey! She leaned closer, reaching for, the, for it. What gives? You'd expect someone of my standing to keep his word, right? I hold, on, I hold everyone to that same standard. He stood up, eas easily holding it out of reach. Effie stopped struggling, but continued glaring. You spoiled jerk. Give it back. Zeke smiled back stubbornly. Think of it as motivation. I'll keep this safe until the oppressor can match a ship like Mimnock. Then you can have it back. He held at, out his hand to her. <laughs> Effie's glare melted into a smile. Snake. She took his hand, pulling herself to her feet. Well, Zeke, you better be ready, because I'm coming back for that card sooner than you think. Effie! Someone shouted from below. Floatcore is acting up. We're drifting to starboard. On it! Effie let go, then did a dramatic bow. Good day, Prince Zhang. She bounced away, sl uh, slipping through the trap door that led below deck and out of sight. City at the edge of the world, 366. Let's see. All right. Greyhaven was not like that. At first glance, it seemed similar to anywhere else they'd visit, with stone and wooden buildings, packed the tenements uh, in some areas, and sprawling estates in others. The city was set atop a hill with levels ascending gradually in a sloping dome worn away over many e eons. It was built into a deep crater where much was cast in perpetual shadow. Thousands of little glowstone lights lit the streets even during the day. Then Remy looked up. The piece of ground that the crater was made from wasn't gone, but floated overhead as a, as a gigantic island of stone, surrounded by an arch archipelago of, of smaller chunks. Remy's eyes were wide as she stared at it. The island held a stone fortress as, almost as large as the Arson Castle. The building had several rising tiers, with cannons and patrolling soldiers on each one. What is that? Remy gasped. Gage seemed to share his, er, her sentiment. He skittered back and forth on the railing, only stopping to look up at the floating keep, then back to Remy. It's the Amaranthine? Emma, Emma <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, Zeke said, stepping up beside her with distance in his eyes. It was an important stronghold when uh, it was an important stronghold when Alenia was founded. Lo and Ida Jean cleared the place of monsters and set up the city. Nightingale added. Remy looked between the two, then finally rested her eyes on Zeke. Lo Jean, your dad? Yeah, he was supposed to be quite the adventurer and, and an engineer. Those those chains holding it in place, the, that mechanism was his idea. Remy smiled, though Zeke did not. With such an impressive fortress, why isn't Greyhaven, Greyhaven the capital of Alenia? They were descending into the city near a large set of doors on one of the lowest uh, chunks of floating stone. This city is amazing. It has an Achilles heel. It has Achilles heels all over it. Zeke answered. If anything happens to the float core holding the whole thing up, the city below will be crushed. Not to mention there could uh, couldn't even be a city here without the Aegis Stone. Aegis Stone? Remy repeated. Zeke waved for her question away. Long story. Anyway, the portal to Earth was found in Alenia, so it, ma it makes a better capital. And since uh, Greyhaven isn't anything but a novelty now, it's unimportant. They put my cousin T uh, Tyriel and, her and his wife Abigail in charge, of in charge as the new duck Duke and Duchess. Sometimes I wonder if my mom just wanted them gone. So yeah, here's the floating fortress and all that good stuff. Remy kept prodding. Wait, you're a prince and Nightingale's a princess. So who are, who was the king when they founded the founded the country? Uh, Alenia was founded by both her parents. Lo and Balthazar established it as a diarchy. He saw the look of confusion on her on her face. It's like a monarchy, but there are two rulers instead of one. So what happened to the Zhang's claim to the throne after your dad died? Seek's uh, expression hardened. You answered your own question. This castle and the Zhang dukes and duchesses are a testament to what he did while he was alive. The Zhongs rule most of Alenia, while the Arsons preside at its capital. Zeke trailed off, looking suddenly bitter. Zeke, the Nightingale rested her hands on, on her hips. You bad-mouthing my family, Zeke? Do we have to take it, uh, take it to the arena? <laughs> nope, I couldn't win. Zeke swatted at one of her pigtails. Plus, they'd marry us off to stop the fighting. Oh, damn. Nightingale looked away. You're probably right. Remy nudged him. Well, I, I can't wait to explore the Emirathine. It's, it's amazing. 
She leaned a little farther off the edge and focused on the system of wires and towers connecting many of the, of the islands with the city below. They didn't hold the islands in place, but supported little gondolas uh, that were moving up and down. What an awesome way to get around. We don't have time, Shaylis interrupted, stepping up behind them. Your friend is in the flare of a Shadow Lord. It'll be a miracle if she's still alive when we get, get there. You really want to make her w wait so you can sightsee? Let me deflate it. Uh, of course not. Once they're once they docked, Shayla led them straight along the main road, out of the crater and, and the city. Thick stone was soon replaced with dense uh, arboreal forest. Remy could still see the amaranthine uh, in the distance, its colossal outline getting less and less distinct as they walked away. Secluded Forest 367 The farther they traveled, the clearer it became that they were off the beaten path. The trail narrowed, and the markers were so worn that Rook couldn't read the miles written on them anymore. I take it not many people come out this way, he called, approaching Shalis, who was bend bending over a map. She pressed the crumpled parchment flat against a nearby tree and glared at it. Why would they? Everyone kn knows about the Shadow Lord. They have more sense than we do. She sp spun subtly, and her gaze settled on a dense copse of trees off to the right. Something's coming. Weapons ready, everyone. And this will be our f first encounter in uh, Chapter 5 in Rare Tier. Uh, the nearer you get to the pl uh, space marked as the Sh Shadow Lord's domain on the map, the more monsters you seem to run into. Even Shalus is surprised at the densely populated thicket. Two Gavadins uh, roam nearby, and, and in the distance you can see a river flowing slowly, tentacles skimming the water's surface. Uh, last time I checked this, there were some bugs, but back when I tested it, but I think it's all been fixed. That looks about right. Right, correct. Those are correct. Uh, we are one, two, three, four, five. We're missing a tentacle. I think it got underneath it. That's probably what happened. Which is actually super annoying. And then when I do this, nope, just missing a tentacle. Or is it in the wrong position? Is that what's happening? No, because there should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're just missing a tentacle. So I will be sure to fix that. Easy, easy enough to fix, I think. I'm a little surprised there's not tentacles up here. Why are there not tentacles up here? Oh, wait, they're here. Found it. It goes right there. All right. And we'll just make sure everything else is right. Looks good. Looks good. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about a few things. One is we're now finding t the next tier of Corpse Collector. The Mature Corpse Collector has, double, I think, double the HP. 15 defense, um, and then uh, does a bunch of, uh, uh, the tentacles will now move orange dice in spaces instead of purples. Uh, besides that, I think everything else is pretty the same. It's just blue dice for attacking and all that good stuff. Murky Merc Hounds, of course, we know about. Murky Merc Hounds are the top, the highest tier of Merc Hound. Crystal Water Loas, I mean, this is from Chapter 2, uh, or end, end of Chapter 2. Um, this is the top highest tier of Waterloa, which is probably good. And then the top tier of Horn Gunvaden. Uh, this one's actually a little bit different. Um, obviously, they have higher, more HP. They have the highest defense in the game, I believe, at 16. A um, few things to note is they actually have um, they have Provoked now. They have Provoked too. And everything else, I think, is the same. Yeah, everything else is still the same. All right, so we got all that going for us. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of totems to deal with. So it's going to be a, a bit of a thing here. Uh, of course, we have Shayla's here. With her weapon that she's not using. We're going to want Nightingale. And the others in front. Uh, 
Zeke and Rook in the back. All right. And uh, as mentioned, this will be on rare tier. And we definitely want to grab every bit of loot we can. We're going to need everything we can get for this. Uh, but yeah, the map itself is actually kind of interesting. Um, blocking volumes ensure that you essentially have to go all the way around here along through the river. Um, the exit's down here, um, but it's also blocked by trees and blockades, so you have to go around this way to get there. And then there's, of course, stuff over here in this corner. Um, it's going to be a, a bit of a mess. It's definitely a lot. It's a very narrow map, even though it looks very big. It, it's very narrow all the way through here for the most part. And then, of course, we got the Corpse Collector. Strategy-wise, um, obviously, the Horn Kavadans are going to be an issue. We need to kill them as quickly as possible uh, before they get courage and start murdering me. Um, it's going to be up to Zeke to kill the Corpse Collector. Uh, obviously, it's not immune to um, it's not immune to good dim, so I can instant kill it, even though it has 100 HP. And killing it will also get us another one of those blossoms uh, or lotuses, rather, that get cost that we can sell for 200 gold, um, which is almost enough to buy a rare item. Um, obviously, we kind of got two of our characters geared up. Um, we definitely need to get uh, Zeke and Rook caught up a little bit. They don't really need too much, to be honest. Um, I just want Zeke to get the next tier of core. And and Rook, I would like to get some better armor. Uh, the, the the final tier of Curus uh, is actually really good because it actually has a Conviction upgrade on it. So definitely a lot of stuff we can mess around with. But uh, enough rambling. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it here. And when we come back, we will do Dense Foliage. Uh, actually, sorry, let me do check this stuff first. Uh, the currents here are two spaces, so very fast currents. Um, we got Overflowing River. Um, the special terrain in Tile 33, which is this one, is actually just water terrain. So that's what's saying there. Uh, the Collector will spawn Murky Murkhounds, no surprise there. Uh, there's something hidden. There's something different about the dark, which we have no info on. Uh, there's a white objective. Only read the following hidden text if instructed to. Uh, which, I guess something to note, there are multiple white objectives. There are four. Hint, hint. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all of it. Yep. All right. And, yeah, the goal is just to get the blue exit. Obviously, we're going to kill everything because we need all the loot we can get. Anyway, I'll go ahead and call it here. I am the Depressed Eeyore. This was uh, Madara on Tabletop Simulator. I'll see you guys later.